recording is on. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192, Digital Imaging with Photoshop um, for the spring semester 2022. Today, we're going to begin lesson 12, which um, from my class is the last lesson that we'll be working on this semester. Um, it covers camera raw, which is a digital negative, um, a, a program that allows you to edit digital negatives. And um, it can be a pretty powerful ancillary program that comes with Photoshop, just as what you're looking at right now, Adobe Bridge comes with all Adobe applications which um, serves to organize and becomes kind of an intermediary for the program. One of the things that I don't know that I've touched on before, but it doesn't hurt, is that, for example, if I select this particular image that we'll be working on in Lesson 12, one of them, that's the photograph of a mission. Okay? Um, if, if we switch from Looking at this under film script and switch to metadata. Okay, so we're looking at the same image. We can look at any of these, but what's what I find really amazing and important, especially if you have a camera, a digital camera that can save as a raw file format. Um, we can look right here and over to the left, lower left hand corner, and it gives you a wealth of information. It tells you the f-stop that was used, the shutter speed. Um, it tells you the ISO of the digital film. It gives you the, the pixel size of the image. It gives you the file size. If you want <clears throat> to rename it, it will give you the file name here. It will give you the document type, which is camera raw. Um, it also tells you the date it was created. If it was modified, the date that it was modified. It gives you, the, again, the file size, the dimensions, all these different things that you um, can refer to, especially if you want. It, it, most photographers keep pretty um, um, exacting record of what they do, at least they used to. And they would have little <clears throat> um, journals that they would do when they would go on a shoot so that if they needed to, in the dark room, or shoot another, you know, they were in another situation similar to that. What settings would they need? And you can see right here for the camera data detail. Um, and there's a bunch of other data that you can, if, if your camera can support, can add. For example, down here at the bottom, GPS settings for latitude, longitude, and altitude. If your camera or device has the capability of recording those settings, that could be invaluable too. What you'll notice here under the camera data, it states, you know, it gives us the information for the focal length, the lens, the maximum aperture, the date uh, and time of the original, um, a flash if it was used or not, um, the make of the camera, which is Canon, the model of the Canon, Canon, Canon EOS, Digital Rebel, and on and on and on. That's a lot of information that's built in to the data, the metadata of these particular um, images. Okay. So today, as I said, we're going to be working with Camera Raw. But to get to Camera Raw, um, you, you can open either <clears throat> um, Photoshop first, or we can go to File. And you can go to browse and bridge and you can you know open up bridge first now i've already opened up bridge and so i'm going to go back over to bridge which is here and i have located the file on my computer which happens to be on my a folder in my desktop on my desktop and um right now it's set to film strip so that all of the images down here um as you click on them on a single click you can see a preview of them. And it tells you, you know, it gives you file type, file name, and that sort of thing. So today we're just gonna work on the mission images in Camera Raw. <clears throat> and then um, later um, on uh, Monday, we'll work with the, the start and images for the woman. 
Um, you'll notice that the start, if we look at the file name for the woman, it's, it, it ends, the extension ends in NEF. That means that that's a Nikon digital image. If we look at the, the extensions for the mission, they ex, the extensions are CRW, which stands for Canon RAW File Format. And then when we're done, um, if you wish, you can save these images as Adobe, um, uh, not raw file format, but digital manuals. And again, that, uh, that permits you to go back to camera raw and then make whatever adjustments that you want. You'll notice in a few minutes that um, there is a significant amount of crossover between what you can do in camera raw <clears throat> and what you can do in Photoshop. Some things I leave to Photoshop, some things you can use in camera raw. Now, <clears throat> You can't open a Photoshop file directly into Camera Raw. TIFF files are not ex ex um, acceptable, but you can open JPEGs directly in Camera Raw and then save them as raw file format if you wish. Or open them in Photoshop when we're done, once you've done some basic editing. So what they want us to do is I'm going to double click on the mission folder. You can see that we have three images of mission taken with all camera raw taken with the uh, uh, canon uh, canon camera digital camera and what we're going to do is we're going to open those and when you try to open so i'm going to hold down the shift key to select all three of these and <clears throat> what you'll discover is that anytime you have a camera raw image and you want to open it in photoshop it will open it open it in camera raw first okay so if you have a digital negative um and you want to open it you have to open it in camera raw first so i'm going to go ahead and double click and you'll see in a minute it will launch camera raw should hold on it's taking a minute here there we go okay so again, now we have, um, we're in Camera Raw. This is version 14.2. I think there's a more recent version, but I'm not sure. Um, and you, again, you can select each of these individually and you can work with them. Now, <clears throat> if we um, start from the left and go over to the right, we can um, cover some of the basic properties that we'll be working with, with um, Camera Raw. We look down to the lower left hand corner, it says that we're, we're sitting, fitting this at 49%. Um, if you want to view it at 100% um, inside the image, you can. We click down here. Um, it's going to give us some options. Again, do you want to view this vertically? The, um, the uh, what is it called? The, down, the film strip, you want to vert it. To show it vertically or horizontally. I'm accustomed to vertical, but I'm going to leave it as a horizontal. That's what's checked off down here. Then over here, we have other options. And if I click on it, and then hopefully it doesn't, here we go. Um, do you want to see the capture date? Do you want to see the file name? Any of those features? Um, it's really not necessary because you can always go back. Um, to the um, bridge and you can see that information there we have this particular button here if you have um, assigned a star rating to it or a color label or anything like that it will um, show that and or you can also assign them so if you've taken several shots on the same day of the same object approximately the same time then there are, there are you know different gradations of the quality you can always go back in here and you can select from here, you've already done that in um, in the bridge. So that's one of the things, and you can select here. You can either delete the image, or I can select here. If I really like this image, I can determine from one to five stars <clears throat> how much I like it. Over in the upper right hand corner, okay, we have. Um, hold on here. Um, I keep forgetting the name of it. It's the, um, it's the histogram, um, and that's what we've used in the past in Photoshop. 
It's um, pretty robust here, if you can rely. And since this is an RGB, it gives you the pattern or the distribution of the red, green, and blue colors located in these photographs. It also gives you the information again, it's a little bit of redundancy. Now it gives you the ISO of the, of the digital film, it gives you the type of uh, lens that was used, it gives you the f-stop, and the shutter speed. Okay. Then we have an edit um, tab here. We have profile to set the color. We have basic settings here, if I close that. We also have curve settings that we can adjust. There's just a boatload of them. We will be using the detail settings shortly um, to improve the quality of this image. That's what's nice about working with digital images is that there's so much metadata built into it that you want that you have the ability to improve what initially looks like a mediocre photograph into something that is quite stellar. It is um, really beautiful because there's a fault of having all of that metadata. There's a whole bunch of information that's built into it. It just needs to be retrieved. So for the start here, we can go ahead and I can this particular image selected. I can start by selecting auto. Okay. And we can see possibly see the changes. If I don't see the changes, then we can it took a few minutes couple of minutes to, to change that. But then what we can do down here, move this up, there we go. I can click down here to hold it. And I can look at before and after. Um, so I'm going to do that from left to right. And you can always turn it off. So already by using the auto settings, um, you can see that what, because it was taken on a cloudy day, um, it looks kind of dark and dingy, and it's brightened up a bit. And we're going to do a little bit more with it to make it look even better. So I'm going to move the image over a little bit. The next thing that you want to do <clears throat> for this particular series of images, is right now, the profile is set to Adobe Color. If you click and hold down on that, you can also select other default settings that are used for landscapes, portraits, and again, we have Adobe Standard. And if you want Adobe Vivid Colors, you can select those. It's up to you. But for this particular exercise, we're going to select the landscape. Notice that that, again, on the fly, made some uh, basic adjustments. Now what we're going to do is, with the Basic tab open, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make some other adjustments in here. So we've already made some automatic changes to it, again, before, after. And now what we're going to do is under the white balance, we're going to change this. I'm going to go ahead and change this from as shot to cloudy, since it is a cloudy day. And that, once again, made the paints of the building even a bit more paint, but I think it's gone over and it's saturated a little bit too much. So now what we can do is we can use the eyedropper. And if you click in the cloud area, typically um, clouds are not as white as you think they are. That's what we want to find is the absolute ultimate white balance in here. Instead, where you'll find more likely white will be the sign in the front here. If I click that, that'll probably be a better yeah, that's a better adjustment for us now. Okay. Now, we can adjust the temperature. We can adjust the tint. We can adjust the exposure. We can adjust all sorts of things. We can do the highlights, the shadows, the whites, the blacks, texture, clarity, which is used all the time. So, <clears throat> we adjusted the white balance. Um, that's what we're going to do now. Hold on. I'm going to make sure that I've got everything. Um, 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 you get the profile, it's the landscape. Because I know that if I just don't look at my textbook, I'm going to forget something, forget something big. So, that, all caught up here. 
So let's make some total adjustments, okay, in the basic settings. So I'm looking at the book here, and it's not that um, you're going to have a book to look at with your own images. You're going to have to play with these settings yourself. That's why I think it's helpful, and this is what I use, to do the automatic settings first. And then tinker with each of these next. You know, the ones that I play with the most are exposure, contrast, I play with highlights and shadows, generally not the whites or the blacks, um, but I will change the clarity settings a little bit. So what they want us to do now is we want to change the exposure from 53 to 50. So it's going to be a little bit darker. Notice that if you want, you can slide this up. And that's way overexposed if you slide it all the way down. Um, again, you're not going to do any damage to the image. It's underexposed, it turns black, and then you're going to hopefully find some sort of sweet spot in here. Let's find 50. The next one is contrast. We're going to leave this at, 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 at zero. Um, the next one for highlights. I'm going to go ahead and change that to from minus 55 to 20. Notice how as I make changes in preview, um, there's a stark, stark difference already. There was at the get-go when we selected um, automatic setting. Um, I'm sorry, highlights we want minus 20. I made it a little too bright, so I want it minus not as much. But you know, if you prefer a higher setting, and that's your taste, and that's totally up to you. Next one are shadows, and that's going to be set to 70. Looking 59 here, all the way up to 70. By an increment, it's not going to be the end of the world. It really bothers me that things really get sluggish. And I'm just typing in. So that goes to 70. Um, whites, we're going to go to a plus of 20. I'm just going over each one of these. The book is telling me. And again, with every setting that I change, notice the difference and how much difference before and after it. Um, blacks, we're going to go to a negative um, 10. And clarity, we're going to boost it to 20. Uh, clarity, we're going to boost it to 20. That adds to the crispness of, of the image, the sharpness. And vibrance, how intense, probably for lack of a better word, the colors are, not how intense, how vibrant they are. There, so we've made some changes, all for the better, I believe. Okay? And again, for these settings, I'm just following the book. And the same for the others that we're going to use. So the next group of settings, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close basic. <clears throat> and we're going to drop down to detail. So we're going to apply some sharpening to this. So in order to see what we're doing here, I want to enlarge it just a little bit so I can see the power and the cross a little bit better at the top. And then what I'm going to do down here, we're not going to add anything to curves, the color mixer, or anything else. But again, these are a whole bunch more um, settings that you have to explore. We're just going to go to detail, pull that down. And then we can see that we can add sharpening. We can add noise reduction, color noise reduction. 
And then e inside each of these settings are our sub settings that when I pull the little arrow to the right, okay, notice that we have more. We have not only the sharpening, but we have the radius, detail, and masking areas that we need to cover. So I'm going to close this for the time being. And I'm going to take the sharpening and I'm going to boost it all the way. To the I'm going to go overboard. to see that if you look at it it really doesn't look so good at 100 but we're starting to see artifacts and it, although it's sharper it's gone kind of gone to the extreme so now what we want to do is turn the you know this down a little bit get this twirl and the radius we're going to change from one which is a normal setting 2.9 So we've got quite time for that. Then we're going to change the detail. We'll leave that, I guess, to 25. And then we're going to change the masking to 61. Okay. Let's see what we get with that. And then we're going to come back and we're going to dial back to 100 a little bit. I'm going to go back from 59, 61 now. Now I can curl this back up. And if I want, I can close the detail settings here. Um, actually, I need to open it back up. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from 100, and we're going to dial the sharpening back so that it's not overkill to about 70. Again, look at, you know, compare it on your screen to see what's going on. And you can see that it looks... It's a little bit more in focus, but we haven't gone overboard with it. Notice how much brighter and more vivid the colors are. Um, not so dingy. Um, we, you know, up the exposure a little bit. And everything looks pretty good now. So the last thing that we're going to do, there are a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to synchronize these. So to do that, I've got the settings here. I can go down, I can close detail, and I'm just going to open up the basic ones again. What I want to do is under, I want to go under the tab here, under here. And I want to select all for Command A. And what that does is that now, not only have, do I have my principal image that I'm going to change, but I want to update these images as well. Because very often is the case is that when you take photographs, especially outdoors, um, it can be the same day, almost uh, the same time and everything, same conditions, but they're going to look considerably different. But what you want, if you're going to go into a book or a brochure or something like that, that you want consistency from image to image, what this will do is it will take the settings that we just used for this particular image and it will update these to match. Okay, so now I need to go from there. Let's go back again. Now that all are selected, I need to go back again and we're going to go to, I'm going to go to sync settings in a little dialog box. Now, you can decide what you want to synchronize. This is the default. We have the profile, which is Adobe Landscape. We have the basic settings, curve, depth, detail, color mixer, and on and on and on. Now, if you want any of the others, you can check those or not. And again, like we had for the others, if you want to check or uncheck some of the things that we've done, under each of those basic or curve settings or whichever, you can do that. But I want to keep all of them identical. Another time that these are used, that this is used is frequently, excuse me, is when photographers are shooting. And this can be indoors or especially out of doors in fashion, in a fashion shoot. And it's important that they have the colors of the clothing accurate and consistent. 
but it's also, you know, very often they're going to use um, the same models but in different settings. You want to make sure that the skin tone, the hair color, and everything is consistent from shot to shot. So this would be a good way to do that. So I'll click that. And you can see that now these guys have been updated. So if I select this one, you can see that it's no longer as dingy. If I select this one, which is very similar, again, we've adopted all those <clears throat> new settings. <clears throat> Pretty cool. Okay. So one of the next steps that we're going to do, there's two more things that we're going to do this, is we're going to save and we're going to open um, one of the images inside Photoshop. And there's different ways that you can open images inside Photoshop. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to save and with a little button up here in the upper right hand corner. So this is convert and save image. So if I click on this, a little dialog box should pop up in here. There we go. So now there's lots of options for us. What I want to do is I'm going to select Let's see, we're going to use the same folder. We're going to use the document name. File extension, instead of BNG, you have other options. That's digital negative. We're going to save this one as a JPEG. Okay? And as soon as that is selected, we have other options that are available to us down here. Now, you can specify the, the pixels per inch. Now, they specified. 300 in the book, I believe they want us to type um, 72 because this would be an image that you would use to um, uh, um, to send to somebody by, by way of email. Um, we can, if you want to limit the size, you can do that. Um, if you want to change the color space, you can do that. Um, the last thing that we want to do though is I'm going to enter under resize up here. Where are we? Image size, size to fit. I don't want to size to fit. I'm going to change the width and the size here. I want to enter 800 pixels. Instead of 1,000 by 1,000, we're going to select 800. OK? So again, we're not making a permanent change to the original image because that will remain a digital negative and again if we want to um, and that's what you would do in another instance is you would switch if you want to go from camera raw to a digital negative you would switch up here and the one that you would want would be the bmg file and you can select all caps to lower that in lower case um, but digital negatives are what adobe makes to turn into a digital negative into uh, or your raw file format into a digital negative. And again, by doing so, you have all of these settings and you can the raw to work with at your disposal. So I'll go ahead and select save. And it should be saved inside the, in the folder. Let me look inside the folder and let's see what we have here. It's taking a moment to open the save folder. And here's the um, yeah, in, here's the mission, so that should be inside there. And here's the JPEG right here. Okay, so it's gone from you know 6.2 megabytes with camera raw um, all the way down to 181 kilobytes. So that's not something that you would use for print. But that's something that you would probably want to use if you wanted um, one to get approval from a client, see if they were happy with the results, um, and you wanted to email them a copy of the image that they haven't paid you yet, and you don't, you know, they can't use it for print, so they would be limited in doing so. So the next thing that we can do, so I can click here again. And I can open this, and there's different ways that we can open this. If you open it directly into Photoshop, and that's what that means, 
that it will no longer, that that open file will no longer be a, a digital negative. But if you want to keep, it will come take that the same file and open, open it up again in camera raw, then what you need to do is you need to open as an object. So I'll do that right now. We haven't worked with objects much in Photoshop this semester. Okay. So it's taking a moment, and hopefully it doesn't crash. And there we go. So now we've opened it in Photoshop, but as an object. Okay. You can see that in the graphic representation, in layers, in the lower right hand corner, there's a little tick mark here, a little representation that lets you know that it is a digital image. Now you have, you know, you can crop it in here, you can apply all many of the same settings that are available in Canva Raw. Um, you can do a variety of things, whatever you, you wanted to do, you know, done for them in the past, you can do. Now at any time with this, if you want to go back to Canva Raw and change the settings, then you just simply double click on this little smart object thumbnail and it will take us back to camera one as i said if you just simply use the open settings it will open it in photoshop but you will no longer have that option to go back from you know it, um, to camera one okay so a bit of a shortened um lesson today um as i said we, we have five weeks left so you need to be finishing up your or working on you will finish up soon your digital painting um and then we'll work on the final assignment um, this next week on, on monday when i finish up this lesson the next week we're going to start on a series of videos that cover cover um, retouching and restoring techniques because that will be the last assignment is to take a photograph new or old that has been damaged and retouch it, restore it to original or better than original condition. Okie doke. Um, oh, there's noise in the audio. Oh, shoot. I wasn't paying attention. Is it still there now? Is that noise? No, it's gone. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's happening. Um, it might have something to do with the microphone that I use. Um, it's a professional microphone. But, you know, there are these technical things. I don't have assistance to help me. So um, that's good. Did it last very long? The noise? I hope not. No, okay, good. Okay, that's good to hear. So that's the first half of working with camera. The next will be the portrait of the woman, and we'll make some initial settings in camera raw, and then we'll bring it over to Photoshop and we'll add some effects in styling with that that you can't do in camera raw in Photoshop and save it. So if we want, I can go back. Let me go back to bridge real quick to show you what we're going to do on Monday. And I'm going to go back out of the mission folder. And I want to look at, let's look at both of these. This is what we're going to work on next week. Okay. So here's the start file, NEF. You can see that it's a little bit dark. It's a good image. But you can see that the whites are whiter and brighter. Skin tones are a little bit more vibrant, and there's a few little, um, her eyes are a little bit bluer. Um, we've also removed some of her blemishes, not all of her blemishes, because that looks a little bit weird when you do that. Um, it looks a little artificial, a little plastic, as the case may be. But this is what we'll do on, on Monday. Okay? So until then, um, that's it. We're all done for today. I'm going to sign off, say goodbye, unless you have any, any questions um, for me. Yeah, okay.
I'll, I'll see you Monday, and um, that's it. I'm going to stop sharing, and we'll start to stop the recording.